Hello, this is Mr. B, and we are solving one-step multiplication inequalities today. We will look at multiplication inequalities, solving them, and we will do lots of practice. Whoa. Okay, first off, multiplication inequalities look something like this. They're multiplication questions that instead of having an equal sign in the middle, which would make them equations, they have the less than, greater than, less than, equal to, or greater than or equal to signs, as you see in these examples. We're going to show how to solve those by following some pretty simple and hopefully by now very familiar steps. Step number one. Find our variable. Whenever you're looking at an inequality and you're trying to solve it, find the variable. In this case, it's x. The variable is whatever letter you're looking at. We ask ourselves what happened to it or what is connected to that x. In this case, it was multiplied times 13. That's what 13x means. So we're going to do the opposite, which is the inverse operation to both sides of this inequality. We're going to divide by 13. So that's what this would look like. 13x divided by 13, the 13's, um, 13 divided by 13 is 1, so we're left with 1x, which we just write down as x, on the left side. And on the right side, 12, uh, 52 divided by 13, which gives us 4. Now, before we go anywhere, we want to do a check of this work. So we want to check and make sure that our work is correct. Is x less than 4? In other words, x can be any number less than 4, and it will make this original inequality a true statement. Let's see. We're going to plug in a number that's less than 4. An easy one to work with is 0. I know 0 is less than 4. Let's do it. Um, 13 times 0 is less than 52. 13 times 0 is equal to 0, and 0 is less than 52, so this check works out. I check to see if my solution, x is less than 4, works with that inequality. Now I could plug in any number less than 4, positive or negative numbers, and they should give me a correct solution when I do the check. Now it's time for you to practice. I'd like you to go ahead, pause the video, try this one out. 9a is less than or equal to negative 108. Hey, are you back? Did you do the question? If not, seriously, pause it and go do it. I'm using my teacher voice now. Go do it. Either that or it's like my commanding my dog to not poop on their lawn voice. One or the other anyway. Um, let's go ahead and solve this one. My variable is a. What's connected to it? Times 9. So I'm going to do the opposite to both sides. I'm going to divide the left and the right by 9. 9a divided by 9 leaves me with a by itself on the left. And negative 108 divided by 9 gives me negative 12. All right, I'm going to check my work because what this means is that a is anything less than or equal to negative 12. So I'm going to plug something that is less than or equal to negative 12 into the original inequality and check it. I know negative 100 is less than negative 12. So I'm just going to use that number. I sometimes like using bigger numbers because then um, I can know for sure and it's easier to multiply and things like that. So let's go ahead and multiply. 9 times negative 100 is less than or equal to negative 108. 9 times negative 100 gives me negative 900. And I look at that. Is negative 900 less than negative 108? Yeah, it sure is. So that is correct. It worked. My check is as checked out, and I know that it's correct. Here's another practice question for you. 6r is greater than or equal to 78. Follow the steps and do a check. Go ahead and work on that one. Hey, we're back. The variable is r. What's connected to it is times 6. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6. 6r divided by 6 gives me r. And 78 divided by 6 gives me 13 r is equal to 13. Oops. Poof. 
that's better. All right, greater than or equal to. R is greater than or equal to 13. So that's my solution. What I want to do is check. So I'm going to pick a number that's bigger, greater than 13. R is greater than or equal to 13. I can pick any number. I may as well make it a pretty big number. I'll pick 100. And I'll plug that into the original inequality. Is 6 times 100 greater than 78? Yeah, 600 is definitely greater than 78. It's greater than or equal to 78. So I've done a check. Notice, if I put in larger and larger, larger numbers, 1,000, a million, uh, you know, 100 million, a billion, it's always going to be larger than 78. So um, I know that my solution is definitely going in the correct um, direction. All right. Now we are going to change gears just a little bit. This is just adding one step, but we have to know how to do this, and that is working with negative coefficients or the number in front of the variable is negative. Watch the steps that we follow. They're going to feel very familiar. First off, I find my variable, which is the n. I ask myself what happened to it. It was multiplied times negative 3. I'm going to do the opposite to both sides of this inequality. In other words, I'm going to divide by negative 3 on both sides. So far, everything is the same, right? negative 3n divided by negative 3 gives me positive n, and 15 divided by negative 3 gives me negative 5. This is where th we add on one more step. If you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to switch the sign. And the sign I'm talking about is the inequality sign. So I have to change it from being n is less than negative 5 to being n is greater than negative 5. All right, so I have to make that switch whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number. Okay, so we divided by negative 3, so that means we had to switch the signs. Make sense? All right, now I'm going to do a check, and I'm going to do a check to kind of prove that this worked. So first off, I have to pick a number. N is greater than negative 5. Any number that's bigger than negative 5. I'm going to use the number 0. So I'm going to plug the number 0 into my original inequality. Th negative 3 times 0 is less than 15. Negative 3 times 0 is 0, and 0 is in fact less than, than 15. That's a true statement. Now, what I'm also going to do here is go back and do a check on this one. If we didn't change the signs, what would happen? Okay, if n was less than negative 5. So I'm going to pick a number that's less than negative 5, like negative 10. And I'm going to multiply negative 3 times negative 10 gives me positive 30. And when you look at that statement now, positive 30 is less than 15. It didn't work. It was wrong. So if we don't switch the sign, our answer will be incorrect. If we do switch the sign, our answer is going to be correct. So that was a fun little extra practice. <laughs> fun. Um, fun little extra practice that we did just to double check. You do need to switch that sign if you're dividing or multiplying by a negative. So here's some practice for you. I want you to remember that last step of switching the sign. Go ahead and solve this one. Pause the video. Come back for the full solution. Hey, welcome back. Let's do this. Z is my variable. I multiply times negative 8, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 8. Negative 8 Z divided by negative 8 gives me Z on the left. 120 divided by negative 8 gives me negative 15. Z, and notice what I did. I did this in one step. I, I went from this step from here to here, and I switched the sign. It went from being a less than to being a greater than sign because I divided by a negative number. I usually do that in the same step. All right, so let's go ahead and try it out. Do a quick check, negative 8 times. I'm going to pick 0 because I know 0 is greater than negative 15, so I'll plug 0 in there. Um, and 0 is, in the end, less than 120. Therefore, 
it checks out um, because the check worked out. Now, if you want to pick a number that's closer to negative 15, you absolutely can do that. You could pick, you're looking for a number that's greater than negative 15, so you might want to try picking like negative 14. Um, that's greater than negative 15 and trying it out and seeing. What you'll end up with is numbers that are closer together, um, but your answer should be this, the left side being less than 120 from the original inequality. All right, one more practice question. Negative 3k is greater than negative 78. Go ahead and solve that inequality. Come back for your full solution. Hey, welcome. Um, we are going to divide both sides by negative 3. Because we're dividing by a negative number, we are going to switch the sign. All right, so it changes from being a greater than to a less than symbol. K is less than 26. I'm going to pick a number that's less than 26. This time I'm going to be a little ridiculous. I'm going to pick the number negative 1,000. You can pick any number that's less than 26. You could pick 25. You could pick 25 and a half, 25.9. Anything that's less than 26 should give you a true statement when you plug it back into your original inequality. But this will work too. Negative 3 times negative 1,000 gives me a positive 3,000, and that is definitely greater than negative 78. A couple of tips for success. Um, solve like regular equations. Just watch for multiplying and dividing by negatives. That will change the sign of the inequality. And as always, practice, practice, and practice some more. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.